Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am sure the House will join me in sending our deepest condolences to the family and friends of Dawn Sturgis, who passed away last night. The police and security services are working urgently to establish the full facts in what is now a murder investigation. I want to pay tribute to the dedication of staff at Salisbury District Hospital for their tireless work in responding to this appalling crime. Our thoughts are also with the people of Salisbury and Amesbury, and my right hon. Friend, the Home Secretary, will make a statement shortly, including on the support we will continue to provide to the local community throughout this difficult time. Turning to Brexit, Mr Speaker, I want to pay tribute to my right hon. Friends, the members the members, the members for Horton Price and Howden and Uxbridge and South Ricelip for their work over the last two years. We do, we do not agree about the best way of delivering our shared commitment to honour the result of the referendum, but I want to recognise the work of the former Secretary of State for exiting the European Union, for the work he did to establish a new department and steer through Parliament some of the most important legislation for generations. And similarly, to recognise the passion that the former Foreign Secretary demonstrated in promoting, in promoting, in promoting. Order, order! They live in the unseemly atmosphere. I want to hear about these important matters. And I think the House should. The Prime Minister. Thank you. In, uh, that the former Foreign Secretary demonstrated in promoting a global Britain to the world as we leave the European Union. And I'm also pleased to welcome my honourable friend, the member for Isha and Walton, as the new Secretary of State for Exeter and the European Union. Mr Speaker, on Friday at Chequers, the Cabinet agreed a comprehensive and ambitious proposal that provides a responsible and credible basis for progressing negotiations with the EU towards a new relationship after we leave on the 29th of March next year. It is a proposal that will take back control of our borders, our money and our laws, but do so, do so in a way that protects jobs, allows us to strike new trade deals through an independent trade policy and keeps our people safe and our union together. Before I set out the details of this proposal, I want to start by explaining why we are putting it forward. The negotiations so far have settled virtually all of the withdrawal agreement, and we have agreed an implementation period which will provide businesses and governments the time to prepare for our future relationship with the EU. But on the nature of that future relationship, the two models that are on offer from the EU are simply not acceptable. First, there is what is provided for in the European Council's guidelines from March this year. This amounts to a standard free trade agreement for Great Britain, with Northern Ireland carved off in the EU's customs union and parts of the single market, separated through a border in the Irish Sea from the UK's own internal market. No Prime Minister of our United Kingdom could ever accept this. It would be a profound betrayal of our precious union. And while I know some might propose instead a free trade agreement for the UK as a whole, this is not on the table because it would not allow us to meet our commitments under the Belfast Agreement that there should be no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Secondly, there is what some people say is on offer from the EU, a model that is effectively membership of the European Economic Area, but going further in some places and remaining in the customs union for the whole of the UK. This would mean continued free movement, continued payment of vast sums every year to the EU for market access, a continued obligation to follow the vast bulk of EU law, no independent trade policy, with no ability to strike our own trade deals around the world. I firmly believe this would not honour the referendum result. So if the EU continues on this course, there is a serious risk it could lead to no deal. And this would most likely be a disorderly no deal. For without an agreement on our future relationship, I cannot see that this Parliament would approve the withdrawal agreement with the Northern Ireland Protocol and financial commitments, and without these commitments, the EU would not sign a withdrawal agreement. Mr Speaker, a responsible government must prepare for a range of potential outcomes, including the possibility of no deal. <coughs> including the possibility of no deal. 
and given the short period remaining before the conclusion of negotiations, the Cabinet agreed on Friday that these preparations should be stepped up. But at the same time, we should recognise that such a disorderly no deal would have profound consequences for both the UK and the EU, and I believe that the UK deserves better. So the Cabinet agreed, the Cabinet agreed that we need to present the EU with a new model, evolving the position that I had set out in my Mansion House speech so that we can accelerate negotiations over the summer, secure that new relationship in the autumn, pass the Withdrawal and Implementation Bill and leave the European Union on 29 March 2019. Mr Speaker, the friction-free movement of goods is the only way to avoid a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland and between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. And it is the only way to protect the uniquely integrated supply chains and just-in-time processes on which millions of jobs and livelihoods depend. So at the heart of our proposal is a UK-EU free trade area which will avoid the need for customs and regulatory checks at the border and protect those supply chains. To achieve this requires four steps. First, a commitment to maintaining a common rulebook for industrial goods and agricultural products. To deliver this, the UK would make an upfront, sovereign choice to commit to ongoing harmonisation with EU rules on goods, covering only those necessary to provide for frictionless trade at the border. This would not cover services because this is not necessary to ensure free flow at the border, and it would not include the common agricultural agricultural and fisheries policies, which the UK will leave when we leave the EU. The regulations that are covered are relatively stable and are supported by a large share of our manufacturing businesses, and we would continue to play a strong role in shaping the European and international standards that underpin them. And there would be a parliamentary lock on all new rules and regulations, because when we leave the EU, we will end the direct effect of EU law in the UK. All, lo- all laws in the UK will be passed in Westminster, Edinburgh, Cardiff and Belfast. Our Parliament would have the sovereign ability to reject any proposals if it so chose, recognising there will be consequences, including for market access, if we chose a different approach from the EU. Second, we will ensure a fair trading environment. So under our proposal, the UK and the EU would incorporate strong reciprocal commitments relating to state aid. We will establish cooperative arrangements between regulators on competition, and we will commit to maintaining high regulatory standards for the environment, climate change, social and employment, and consumer protection. Third, we would need a joint institutional framework to provide for the consistent interpretation and application of UK-EU agreements by both parties. This will be done in the UK by UK courts and in the EU by EU courts, with due regard paid to EU case law in areas where the UK continued to apply a common rulebook. This framework would also provide a robust and appropriate means for the resolution of disputes, including through the establishment of a joint committee of representatives from the UK and the EU. It would respect the autonomy of the UK and the EU's legal orders and be based on the fundamental principle that the court of one party cannot resolve disputes between the two. Fourth, the Cabinet also agreed to put forward a new business-friendly customs model, a facilitated customs arrangement. This would remove the need for customs checks and controls between the UK and the EU, because we would operate as if a combined customs territory. Crucially, it would also allow the UK to pursue an independent trade policy. The UK would apply the UK's tariffs and trade policy for goods intended for the UK, and the EU's tariffs and trade policy for goods intended for the EU. 96% of businesses would be able to pay the correct tariff or no tariff at the UK border, so there would be no additional burdens for them compared to the status quo, and they would be able to benefit from the new trade deals that we will strike. In addition, we will also bring forward new technology to make our custom systems as smooth as possible for those businesses who trade with the rest of the world. Some have suggested that under this arrangement the UK would not be able to do trade deals. They are wrong. When we have left the EU, the UK will have our own independent trade policy, with our own seat at the World Trade Organisation, and the ability to set tariffs for our trade with the rest of the world. We will be able to pursue trade agreements with key partners, and on Friday the Cabinet agreed that we would consider seeking accession 
to the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Mr Speaker, our Brexit plan for Britain respects what we have heard from businesses about how they want to trade with the EU after we leave and will ensure we are best placed to capitalise on the industries of the future in line with our modern industrial strategy. Finally, as I have set out in this House before, our proposal also includes a far-reaching security partnership that will ensure continued close cooperation with our allies across Europe while enabling us to operate an independent foreign and defence policy. So this is not just a plan that is good for British jobs, but good for the safety and security of our people at home and in Europe too. Some have asked whether this proposal is consistent with the commitments made in the Conservative Manifesto. It is. The Manifesto said that, and I quote, as we leave the European Union, we will no longer be members of the single market or customs union, but we will seek a deep and special partnership, including a comprehensive free trade and customs agreement, and that is exactly what the proposal agreed by the Cabinet seeks to achieve. What we are proposing is challenging for the EU. It requires them... It requires them to think again, to look beyond the positions they have taken so far, and agree a new and fair balance of rights and obligations. Because that is the only way to meet our commitments to avoid a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland without damaging the constitutional integrity of the UK and while respecting the result of the referendum. It is a balance that reflects the links we have established over the last 40 years as some of the world's largest economies and security partners. It is a bold proposal that we will set out more fully in a white paper on Thursday, and we now expect the EU to engage seriously with the detail and to intensify negotiations over the summer so that we can get the future relationship I firmly believe is in all our interests. In the two years since the referendum, we have had a spirited national debate. With with robust views echoing around the Cabinet table as they have on breakfast tables up and down the country. Over that time, I have listened to every possible idea and every possible version of Brexit. Mr Speaker, this is the right Brexit, leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. A complete, a complete end to free movement taking back control of our borders, an end to the jurisdiction of the CJEU in the UK, restoring the supremacy of British courts. No more sending vast sums of money each year to the EU, instead a Brexit dividend to spend on domestic priorities like our long-term plan for the NHS. Flexibility on services where the UK is world leading. No hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland or between Northern Ireland and Great Britain a parliamentary lock on all new rules and regulations, leaving the common agricultural policy and the common fisheries policy, the freedom to strike new trade deals around the world, an independent foreign and defence policy, but not the most distant relationship possible with our neighbours and friends, a new deep and special partnership, frictionless trade in goods, shared commitments to high standards so that together we continue to promote open and fair trade, and continued security cooperation to keep our people safe. This is the Brexit that is in our national interest. It is the Brexit that will deliver on the democratic decision of the British people. It is the right Brexit deal for Britain, and I commend this statement to the House.